Hello everybody, welcome to another segment of Cooking with Mario. My name is Mario DiMartino. I own the Newburg Deli in Nazareth and we have a brand new exciting location in Easton, Pennsylvania, 2600 William Penn Highway, right across from the high school. Love to see you come on in. Today's episode is, is, is a fun episode. It's one of the world's favorite foods I'm gonna make for you today. It's nothing new in respects to the category, but we're gonna put a Newburgh Deli twist on it, and we're gonna add some local folklore to it, and we're gonna jazz up your favorite uh, fun food, Friday night food, football food, pizza with the Newburgh Deli. Today we're going to talk about two different kind of pizzas. One is the bruschetta pizza, and the other one is the local German pizza here in Pennsylvania. I hope you stay tuned for this great episode to show you how to make this great product. Hi, I'm Joseph Elias, founder of Elias Market, featuring a wide selection of international food items and the freshest produce at the lowest prices. Elias Markets in Allentown and Bethlehem are filled with an ever-changing variety of just-picked fruits and vegetables. Tender meats and deli products. Choose from aisles of international and hard-to-find food and household items. But don't take our word for it. Stop in and see for yourself. IRS problems? Corvino and Verwise, local specialist in tax controversies, has your solution. Save time and money. Never talk to the IRS again. Call today for a free consultation. These two pizza concepts I'm going to talk to you about, one of them was born centuries ago in Italy, the bruschetta pizza, which is uh, a very unique blend of tomatoes and herbs. The other one is the local German pizza, but we're going to put a twist to it today in that I'm going to bring something to the table to make the product a little more exciting, a little more local, and a little more indigenous to Newburgh Deli. And that is I'm going to create for you today a deep dish French crust baguette bread recipe pizza, absolutely to die for. You know, many years ago, about nine years ago, my wife and I desired to be in the restaurant business and we moved, we couldn't afford a restaurant here in Pennsylvania because the prices were astronomical, the economy was different. If you wanted to buy a restaurant or pizzeria, it was exorbitant. So we moved, believe it or not, our whole family to the country of Panama, <laughs> where it was a little more affordable. It was really an exotic trip. It was something I wanted to do. I packed the whole wife and kids up. We moved to the western frontier of Panama in a little village called Boquete, and we set up Mario's Ristorante. And I teamed up with a man down there by the name of Pierre from France, who was a tremendous baker. And this man made the most incredible baguette French bread you've ever had. And I said to Pierre, you know, I would love to make a pizza with your recipe. Would you help me? So he tutored me a bit and we were able to nail down a recipe for French crust baguette pizza. And we started to sell these pizzas in a brick oven in Mario's Ristorante and they came from everywhere. Needless to say, the place was successful and we built quite the following in the folklore and it was a super unique pizza. You know, nothing against other pizzerias, but maybe sometimes you step out of the box and you want to make something that's a little unique for your family or something different. Today's product is the deep dish French crust baguette pizza. So I take these personal pans here, I line them with a little bit of uh, shortening, if you will, and I take this secret dough recipe. I can't really share it with you. You're going to kind of have to figure it out yourself, but when you figure it out, uh, it'll work great for you. You're going to take the, 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 the dough and you're going to make it room temperature after you've made it and, and proofed it and, and kneaded it. You're going to put it in this little eight inch pizza shell, pardon me, pizza case, and then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to gently roll that pizza in that round case and this keeps it formed. You don't have to go through the whole gyrations of being, you know, uh, Joe New York City pizza flipper. You could be Susie Homemaker, have fun with this product. Okay, the first one is we're gonna make the German pizza. Now the German pizza is not really from Germany. The folklore has it that back in 1948 or 49, there was a bar on the south side of Easton, Pennsylvania, Northampton County, and they used to serve great cheesesteaks. And in that process, uh, they also had little, you know, pizzas in the, in the back room, 
and this fella came in who was an Italian. He was a local Pennsylvania Dutchman, and he said, hey, Guido, you know, that, I'm assuming that's the shop owner's name. He said, what's, what's the probability of you putting some cheesesteak, you know, in, in your pizza? And he said, well, you know, I never heard that before. We said, well, give it a try. So they took a little cheesesteak meat, you know, and they, they sauteed it up with some steak, a little fried onions, okay, and they worked it. Then they came back and they made a traditional pizza where they got the pizza shell, or in that case, it's probably a large New York style pizza. They put a little base of cheese first, a little base of cheese. Then they got the bisteca. They went in with the bisteca. You want very tender, high grade steak to make this product. We do this at the deli, and people are really raving about the quality of this introductory product. We go, we go back to a little bit more mozzarella cheese. It just makes everything taste good, mozzarella. Okay? One of the secret ingredients on this is, believe it or not, is these banana peppers. Now, they come large rings. I don't like it when they're large, so I make them a little fine. I'm kind of into the, pardon the pun, the finery of things. So I put, I put the, uh, the banana peppers diced real fine. I go back to the raw onion factor again. Got to have that raw onion in there. Don't worry about, you know, the pungentness of raw onion. The oven will cook it off. It'll make it nice. Okay. And then after that, a little bit of seasoning. And she is ready to go right in the oven. Our first little product. Look how fast that was to make that at the Newburg Deli. Our second pizza, folks, is going to be the bruschetta pizza. You know, the bruschetta pizza, I forgot to oil this pan here, so I'm going to put a little bit of, um, a little bit of shortening in there to, to lubricate to ensure that it's going to come off, okay? The bruschetta pizza is really a nice combination of, um, again, sauce, cheese, herbs, and, and the sorts. You know, it's funny, pizza, you know, we, here, we're here in America, we have all kinds, of, and the pizzas in America are incredible. I've lived in Italy. And I could say they're great, but I think pizza in America is actually better. We've had the license to step out of the box, and with the entrepreneurial spirit of Americans, along with the creativity of the, the melting pot, we've made tremendous strides in creating unique pizzas. You know, the word pizza, it's funny in Italian, um, means pie. So if you go into a restaurant and say, hey, Guido, you know, let me have a pizza pie. In essence, you're saying, let me have a pie pie. It's kind of funny you know, when we talk about you know, language and, and culture. So um, in this case, we're going to make the bruschetta pizza. And it's kind of like, like, like a white pie in that it's devoid of a red sauce. In this case over here, I had the, the, the red sauce for the first German pizza, which is really a crushed tomato. You want to make it salsa a la crude, meaning you want raw sauce. That's the secret to a good pizza sauce. Never cook a pizza sauce. You kill it. You don't want all these green Christmas tree herbs and everything in there. Keep it very light. A little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, key ingredient, dry basil, very lightly in there. So as we make this next pizza, we're going to put that in the pan. We're going to try to, again, roll it up and make that crust for this bruschetta. The bruschetta pizza incorporates a couple other things that we didn't do in the German, and that was we put a base of beautiful olive oil on the bottom. You don't have to really rub it through. Just make it generically in there. And then we're going to give it a small base of the mozzarella. Very easy pizza to make. Small base of the mozzarella. The secret ingredient here is the regatta. Okay? Fresh regatta. I use this one brand around here I just love. It's so silky. Make sure you put enough in there to make it stand out because you don't want someone to think it's just a Mott's pizza. This is really uh, a unique blend of Italian favorites. Mozzarella, rigotta, the crust obviously. Then we're going to push that German stuff aside for a minute. Wipe your tools off and we're going to, a little bit of fresh onion. Nope, no onion in this pizza. My bad. <laughs> okay, basil is our key. That's our next ingredient on this secret bruschetta pizza. Fresh basil, 
Oops. Makes the atmosphere smell good. I didn't meet anybody that doesn't like basil. Don't forget our fresh diced tomatoes that are in there. Fresh diced tomatoes. Be generous with the tomatoes because we're lacking a sauce. We need some sort of um, hydration liquid product in there, if you will, to, to take away the heavy starchiness of the product. Okay, now we're going to get this little trusty jigger here that I have, if I can get it loose. And that's got that fresh pulverized garlic. I mean, that's really a key there. Fresh pulverized garlic. If you like garlic, add as much as you want. Small, finely diced onions that I had prepared for this pizza. Small, finely diced onions for this pizza. A little bit of a secret ingredient right here is this, you know, my chefs at the restaurant call this the kiss of Mario. It's this Newburgh Deli oil. It's organic. It's from Avellino, Italy. I put it on everything. I just love it. It just zips up the flavor and every little bit of organic oil, special seasoning, SPG combination like that. And folks, she is literally ready for the oven such as this. We're going to go in the oven with that one and we're going to see in 30 seconds or a minute or excuse me, in 10 minutes, how these pizzas are doing after we take a break. I want to thank the sponsors at Elias Market who have been, who've been just so generous to the Newburgh Deli. You've got to stop and see their new showcase. They've literally doubled their store in capacity with all the new fixtures and produce. It is an incredible place. And Corvino and Verwise up in Wayne Gap, your tax specialist. Thank you so much for sponsoring. Hi, I'm Joseph Elias, founder of Elias Market, featuring a wide selection of international food items and the freshest produce at the lowest prices. Elias Markets in Allentown and Bethlehem are filled with an ever-changing variety of just-picked fruits and vegetables, tender meats, and deli products. Choose from aisles of international and hard-to-find food and household items. But don't take our word for it. Stop in and see for yourself. IRS problems? Corvino and Verwise, local specialist in tax controversies, has your solution. Save time and money. Never talk to the IRS again. Call today for a free consultation. Another thing that's unique about the New Newburgh Deli pizza process is that it's not just stuck in a pan, we pull it out and put it on your table. You know, we take, we take the pizza out of the partially cooked um, cradle that it's in, you know, in this case, the, uh, the, the eight inch pan. And then we, we gingerly pull it out of the shell. It's crucible, if you will. And then we get the little pizza doohickey. I don't know what you call it, a spatula pizza turner. And we put, we put that product partially cooked back in there. So we get the, you know, the, the stuff in the middle that tends to be you know, too hydrated, make your pizza droopy, if you will, spill in your lap. We're going to fix that by evaporating those juices, making the bottom partially crispy, and then you have a, a more pleasurable pizza experience. So we're going to wait about eight, eight, six, six minutes altogether. It's like a 12 minute process per pizza. And we take them out and our next, um, our next stage to this process is plating it up and bringing someone exciting pizza. Hey, a German pizza for $6.99 that has steak on it and all these nice ingredients. Two people can split it. I and mean, we're talking an inexpensive meal here. And, and then the cheese pizza, we have just plain cheese and meat, excuse me, cheese and sauce is, is $4.99. And we have pepperoni at 50 cents. And then the bruschetta is also $6.99. So these are affordable pizzas. Husband and wife or a couple kids can, can split up. And uh, I, just, I just love this product. It's a simple food. And you know people are um, raving about the taste, and I think it's that French crust. You know we're we're so accustomed to like a heavy gluten process. This has less gluten if you're if you're kind of gluten conscious. You know, and the crust is crispier. You, if you like baguette or French, uh, you know, bread mixture, we have a, a, a fabulous taste to it. Okay, folks, now for the final step, we're going to take out that removed pizza from the eight-inch deep crust shell shell tray and we're gonna we're gonna plate up some pizza real quick okay the first one's that german pizza look how pretty that came out folks isn't that nice looking isn't that swell got the steak 
the hot peppers, the, the, the now cooked onions, that beautiful pizza sauce, French deep dish baguette, very filling, very tasty. Um, you're just gonna absolutely, you're gonna absolutely love it, folks. In this case, you can get a large cleaver knife. You can just pinch it. You know, if you don't have a pizza cutter home, no problem. That's what I'm showing you this with the pincher knife and just for it. You give it a flip a little bit like that. Nice little four top there. Perfect. Now you're going to get your, your trusty paddle. I, sorry about that. Now you're going to get your trusty paddle and we're going to put it right into the, the basket ready for use. We've got a gorgeous German pizza, Newburgh Deli style, Lehigh Valley specialty favorite. Gonna wipe off. The next one's coming out is that famous bruschetta pizza. The bruschetta pizza, Italian style with the regot, the garlic, the onions, the basil. Major slice of heaven. Major slice of heaven. Again, we're gonna do that crispy. Gonna rock the knife a little bit. Give it a slight spin. You should smell this basil and garlic with that olive oil and slight seasoning. Oh my word, it fills the whole store up when people come in and say, what's that smell? That's what you're looking for. You know that old time deli smell from New York or Philly when you came in, they had that cheese is hanging, the salamis and the hot peppers, and you just don't get that anymore. This is a little bit of that, and you've got to try that. We're going to see about slipping this one back onto the tray here. So we can plate this one up nice for the people out front. They're gonna love it. Husband and wife split this for eight, nine dollars with a drink. Finalize it with a little bit of that beautiful oil on both of them. Believe it or not, the German pizza actually can get a little bit of oil for flavor. And we've got these two gorgeous deep dish French crust baguette pizzas brought to you by Unique Recipes from Newburgh Deli. I'm Mario, chef and cook at Newburgh Deli and your friend in the neighborhood. Come on by and see us sometime. And we thank you so much for the sponsors, Elias Markets and Corvino and Verwise up there in Wing Gap, your tax specialist. I wish you the very best. I look forward to seeing you next episode. God bless you and God bless America.